Hey everybody, welcome back to Sovereign Money. In a recent video, I introduced you to a really neat Bitcoin only desktop wallet called Sparrow Wallet. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your own multi-hardware, multi-signature wallet in the Sparrow Wallet using two cold storage hardware devices. I'm going to use the Ledger Nano X along with the Trezor Safe 3 hardware wallets to set up a multi-hardware, super secure, multi-signature wallet in the Sparrow Wallet. If that sounds neat, let's dive in. Okay, I'm assuming you have the Sparrow Wallet downloaded and installed. You can get it at sparrowwallet.com and then make sure you verify the download to make sure it's not malware or something like that and then install it. And this is what you should see when you open the application. If you'll notice, there are very few options. And down here in the lower right corner is a switch which connects you to the blockchain. In this case, it's yellow, which means I'm connected to the public blockchain, but you can set up your own Bitcoin node and you should for best privacy practices. That's the subject of a future video. So make sure you subscribe and hit the like button while you're down there. But for today, we're going to create that multi-signature wallet using these two hardware devices. So we're, what we want to do is select the new wallet option. Obviously, we're going to call this multi-sig create wallet. And we're greeted with this screen. None of these buttons over here on the left are working because we don't have a wallet yet. But we really have four main choices in the center here and some options in the upper left. So let's look at these. This says single signature. We don't want that we want to create a multi-signature wallet. And when we do that, we have some new options over here on the right. We can create as many as we like, I guess, oh yes, <laughs> a lot. So there's really no limit to the number of cosigners that we can create, but obviously it gets really silly. For today's purposes, for demo purposes, we're going to create a two of three M of N multi-sig wallet using two hardware devices. And you might think, well, where's the third key coming from? If one key is in the ledger and one key is in the treasure, where's the third key? We're actually going to use the third key from the built-in software of the Sparrow wallet. And I'll show you that in a minute. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to connect these two hardware devices and then we'll create that third key in the Sparrow wallet software. So we're going to select the connected hardware wallet option first. And this is for the key number one. And this area down here shows how many keys are in your wallet. If you change the number of keys in the upper right, you can see now that there are four keys or five keys. You see that? Okay, so let's go back down to three. There we go, three keys. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to connect this ledger device and see if we can use that as one of our multi-sig keys. Press connect. And then what I have to do is connect, physically connect the device. I'm going to enter the pin and I'll be right back. Once you enter the pin, you have to make sure that the Bitcoin application inside the ledger device is installed and activated. So I'm gonna select that. It, the screen says Bitcoin is ready. Then I press scan and that was it. <laughs> Pretty fast, huh? It says Ledger Nano X, import key store is the choice we want to make here. And that's it. Now the Ledger Nano X represents the first of the three keys that we're going to have in this multi-signature wallet. Super easy, done. So let's move on to the second key. So we're going to click this tab right here, key store two. And again, we're going to connect a new hardware wallet. So I'm going to unplug the ledger and connect my Trezor Safe 3. I'll enter the pin and I'll be right back. Okay, the pin has been entered, connected hardware wallet, and then we'll press scan and see if we can find the Trezor Safe 3. And it's asking for my passphrase. I'm going to tell it I don't want one. And there it is, Trezor Safe 3, import key store, and that's it. The Trezor Safe 3 is our second key and that is connected and finished. This is going so fast. This video is gonna be really quick. And now our th for our third key, what we wanna do for convenience sake is we're going to use the built-in software key. So one key is going to stay on the computer encrypted and the other two keys are going to be in various hardware devices offline. So if somebody gets into our device, our computer or whatever, they can't send crypto out of this wallet without one of these other devices and the pin and all the other associated security measures. So let's go ahead and create a software key for this third one. We're going to 
create new or imported software wallet. Select that. I'm going to select 12 words. I have a set of 12 words already set. I'm going to go ahead and copy them, paste them in here, and then I'm going to click create key store and I will be right back. Okay, I just pressed create key store and now the seed phrase that I pasted in there is in the computer and I'm going to press import key store to import it into our wallet and there we have it. I'm going to rename this software key and that is it. Once I press apply, that key will be added as our third key and now I need to set a password for the application so that it can encrypt the data of the wallet. You wouldn't use such a simple password, but for demo purposes. Here we go. Now you probably can't see this because it might be blurred out, but in this mess of text right here is all the information you need to restore this wallet. I can't stress this enough. Multi-sig wallets are different than single sig wallets in terms of backing them up and restoring them. In a two of three multi-sig wallet, you think, okay, I have three keys. If I lose one, I still have two, so I can restore the wallet and I'm good. That is wrong. You will lose all of your crypto if you lose one key, unless you have all of the XPUBs for each of the keys. And that is typically done or kept in a backup file of some type. And that's what this is for the Sparrow wallet. This data here contains all of the XPUBs for this multi-sig wallet, which you require when you restore the wallet, unless you have all three keys. If you have all three keys, you can restore the wallet anytime. But if you lose a key, you have to have the XPUBs. So what you would do is you would save this PDF and place it where it wherever you want. I would encrypt it or put it in a, an encrypted storage device, save it for later. For now, I'm just gonna press okay. And that is it. The, the wallet is done. We have our Ledger Nano X. We have our Trezor Save 3 and then our software key. Now, if we send Bitcoin to this wallet, what we wanna do is click the receive button over here on the left. It creates an address for us. I'm not gonna do this in today's video because the on-chain confirmation times have made it really challenging to do demo transactions in videos. So you just have to trust me. Basically, you send your Bitcoin to this address or you scan this QR code. And then of course the Bitcoin will show up in your wallet in the transactions section right here, right in this area. And then the balance will change from zero Bitcoin to whatever you send to the wallet. In order to send the Bitcoin out of the wallet, what you're going to have to do is click the send button. You paste an address in here. Let's do a copy an address from the receive side. We're gonna paste it in here. We're gonna add a label and you can set whatever amount of Bitcoin you want or use the max amount using this button here, set a fee, and then you would press this create transaction button down here and then eventually send it out for confirmation. Now, here's the thing. There's only one key available in this wallet right now, if we go back to the settings, and that's this software key. The other keys reside on the hardware devices. So in order to authorize this transaction to send out for confirmation, we would have to plug in not both of these, but just one of the two. That way, if we lose one, we can still send the Bitcoin out to a new wallet. That's why I used a software key. So you might think using a software key is a lower security measure, but I look at it as a safety measure or a security measure in case I lose one of these hardware devices for signing the transaction because I don't have the keys on the wallet, they're on the device, so I need the device, okay? So that gives me sort of some wiggle room in terms of managing those pieces of hardware because I only need one of the two pieces of hardware to sign a transaction to get the Bitcoin out of this account. Yet it maintains the highest level of security available for any Bitcoin wallet, which is multi-signature, okay? That's it, that was super easy. I hope that helps guys. If you liked today's video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think of multi-signature wallets. If you have two hardware devices, it's super easy to set up one of these multi-signature wallets on Sparrow Wallet, and I think you should do that for your super cold storage. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.